everybody and welcome back to the channel which is all things aviation this is angela tv here welcoming you back again today we are in conversation with pilot jason vaudry jason will take us through his journey uh, in pilot training and he will also share with us his experience of you know joining an airline what he had to go through what types of tasks he had to go and stay the course because at the end he will be sharing with us uh, tips for you know aspiring aviators on how to actually walk this journey that he has walked in the past. <laughs> okay. How are you, man? That was, that was a rough time. I'm good, man. How are you doing? I'm all right. I'm all right. I was trying to. I've been shooting with yeah. the phone as a camera because it's better quality. Yeah. But today, it's yeah, just yeah. giving up. It doesn't want to work with me. But it's right, I don't know what's going on with, with this uh, one. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what's going on with technology today, man. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good to have you on board. Right. Thank you for for saying yes to our request. Right. Thank you for having me, man. It's an opportunity. I enjoy it, you know. Yeah. Like talking about aviation. So if yeah. it can help like the young people like you said in Africa, man, I'm all for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we really appreciate. We really appreciate. This mm -hmm. will go a long way. This will really go a long way. I've been following yeah, a YouTube channel. Great stuff that you're putting up there. It's very inspirational. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Mm. Perhaps let me not waste time because we've already been delayed yep. by this thing. Let's just get down to it. Um, I'd ask you to tell you, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, okay, and so should I and go from and stuff like that? Yeah, should mm -hmm. I just go right into it? Yeah. Oh, so, all right, guys. So my name is Jason Voudry. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm West African. I'm from Burkina Faso originally. I've lived uh, a big part of my life in Canada, but I've been traveling a lot since I was a kid because both of my parents are in the aviation industry. And so basically, from a young age, I was always traveling from Canada back to to West Africa always and uh, doing school there, coming back in Canada. So I was very well traveled and I've had a lot of experiences when it comes to like just traveling and being in aircraft and stuff like that. And so from a young age, since, since both of my parents were in the aviation industry, I've always wanted to be a pilot. Like from a very young age, it was like the only thing I saw myself doing, you know. So I was always like in the cockpit. My dad... Uh, is an is a, is a pilot as well so i was always like in the cockpits or in the cabin and just like dreaming of seeing myself one day as part of the crew you know so mm. yeah I've, 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 i went through school high school uh, university and everything with just the scope of becoming one day an airline pilot so i always focused on science mathematics and stuff like uh -huh. that when i went to high school i focused i had to, i was specialized in mathematics and then I did uh, some mechanical engineering as well. And then I went on to flight school. Mm -hmm. And uh, after flight school, then I got a job in West Africa right now. So I'm currently uh, a first officer for an airline here in West Africa. And man, it's just, I'm just happy to be in this position. It's crazy. Like I'm very young, so yeah, I'm just very grateful. I've been able to get to the stage as quick as I did. And I just want to keep learning as much as possible. And I want to inspire young people like me as well to get into it that's why i have my youtube channel and it's just mm -hmm. it's just something i enjoy doing you know so it's just crazy i so can see because you, one can read the passion in you when you speak about this thing even when you post your videos one can see the passion behind those videos and i think that's yeah, what yeah. keeps young people um you know dreaming and, and and focused on their dream as well and saying one day i want to be like jason you know <laughs> yeah that's, that's, it's, it's a blessing that people think like that you see, i don't even see myself like that like that personality yeah. or anything it's literally just like i'm just trying to promote this message and just try to motivate as many people mm. as possible because i know that me when i was back in that situation where i was just in school i would have loved to see people like me and the behind the scenes of what they had to go through and things like that so that's why i do these vlogs and i try to explain things to people because you know a lot of people if they don't understand something they just tend to give up and it's the easiest route to take and it makes sense because you know aviation is kind of a closed off um field you know like if you don't have anybody in that field that you know it's very hard to get into it yeah. because it's very specific and people need mentors to like guide them in a way and mm. to be honest i'm still very young i don't know everything but if i can just help people take that step man that's, that, that's just enough for me for now you know mm. so, trust me yeah. man even at your level there's quite a lot that you're doing with your your outreach you know there's so many lives you're, you're touching so many young people whose minds are turning around uh, who will one day look back and say i chose to follow my passion because i saw jason do one two three and it motivated me it's, yeah. it's, it's, Man, it's it motivates easy. me as well to keep going yeah 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 no quite quite, quite awesome it's an awesome story i was gonna ask you about um, 
um, your dream, how the dream started, but we've already said that both your parents are in aviation and uh, obviously you had no choice but to, because you were, you, were, you were exposed to this thing, you know? You could have gone exactly. on a doctor exactly. or something, but it was right in front of you. Yeah, the person to be very passionate about it. It's a job that requires passion and the fact that I was close to it for so long, it just created that passion for me. Like, it's literally like a love for aviation. It's like, you know, when you're, when you spend a lot of time with doing something and then you just start like seeing yourself like, man, I, I don't think I can do anything else than that because I'm just, I just really love, I just enjoy the process of doing that. It's literally like that. You get paid to travel and fly. It's not for everybody though. It's not for everybody that job. But if, if it is for you, man, you will definitely succeed in it because you just keep envisioning yourself, man, I'm like, I'm, 36,000 feet up in the air. I'm yep. flying to another country. I'm going to like meet some new people. I'm going to be in mm -hmm. that new place. I'm going to get to come back as well at the command of this like, great aircraft. It's just, it's amazing. Awesome, awesome, awesome. You've already talked about your high school subjects, your mathematics, your science, and so forth and so forth. You also went to university. Yeah. Okay, what did you study? Mechanical engineering. Mechanical engineering. Okay, that's fine. Because I, I often... Um, talk to young people and I tell them it's okay to go to university after high school, even if your yeah, dream is to sure, be in the sure. cockpit, you know. Yeah. Because I mean, yeah, go yeah, ahead. Go ahead. Uh, you want me to talk? You can you can finish. I'll finish. So, uh, uh, I was saying, I often advise them to say, you will not always have funding for this thing. So sometimes taking that route through university to find yourself is the best way you can do this. Yes. That's the thing. Now, me personally, what I would say is this, listen, like if you have the capability of just starting out of high school, I mean, for sure do it. But at the end of the day, university will always be an added value because I'm going to tell you something. A lot of people who come out of high school, they're not mature mentally yet. I mean, you've just come out of high school. You don't really know anything. Mm -hmm. And you go into flight school and flight school is full of all types of people, first of all. And second of all, I mean, the added value you will get from university and college mm -hmm. will give you a mental background that will make it a lot easier for you. I went to mechanical engineering. Flight school for me was a lot easier when it comes to mathematics and stuff like that because everything I'd, I'd done already. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of things for me that came a lot easier. And having, having that college experience, that university experience, I've had added life experience. I made new friends there. I kind of mm -hmm. had a life that kind of gave me a personality outside of just high school, you know? So mm -hmm. it's these things, first of all. And second of all, as well, like you said, it's about funding as well. Like, Mm. Not everybody is lucky enough to have parents who are ready to fund their flight school. Mm. So you might have to like maybe go to university, get that degree as a backup plan for you to be able to maybe pursue flight school in a foreseeable future. You know, it's, you have to think about both sides of these things and depending on your personality and depending on what you want for yourself, make that decision. Yeah. But it depends on the person, you know, but it's, it's always a plus. Awesome. Awesome. Um, what did you train? A Canada or in Africa? Uh, I trained in Europe. I trained oh, in Spain. Europe. So you have an IASA yeah. license? I have an IASA license, exactly. Nice, nice. How did you find the experience of training in Europe? Yeah, that's that's the question I always get. So everybody's like, oh, you come from Canada. Why did you go to Europe to study? Okay, so I'm going to so I'm gonna tell you my, my thought process about this. So like, I, yeah. so I've had a good mentor. And um, because my dad is a pilot, he knows a lot of other pilots. And I have like a network of people I can always ask questions to. Whenever, whenever, like I, I need like advice, and at that point in my life, obviously I wasn't really in the aviation industry yet. Industry yet, so I, I was trying to like get as many opinions as I could, mm. and so I started looking for schools in Canada uh, and everything like that. I found some schools that were good, even in, in the USA. There was Embry Riddle I looked at as well, mm -hmm. which is a school where you can have basically for for the people watching, it's a school where you can have both a college degree and a pilot's license at by the time you're done. It's like four year degree, so that's a pretty good alternative now i was speaking to these people and they were telling me basically the easa license is a license that is more prestigious than the faa or tca tca is with the canadian one it's more prestigious than the rest why is that is because when you have the easa license it can take you like by the time you reach 1500 hours which is the atpl to unfreeze it it is a lot easier to convert your license to any other than it would if you had an faa license if you have an FAA license and you want to switch it to an EASA one, you will have to do all 14 EASA subjects again and sit down and do the exams. However, if you have an EASA license and you want to do a TCA or an FAA license, you will literally do a SIM 
and basically one written one little written exam and it will basically be it i mean it's, i'm not saying it's easy i'm just saying it's mm -hmm. easier it's a lot easier and it takes a lot less time process wise yes so that would mm. be my idea. yeah and now since i'm african and i knew i was going to start in africa because i wanted to start close to family and close mm. to home i know that Afri African uh, airlines, they accept EAS licenses and FAA licenses. Mm. So might as well start with an EAS license, get my hours up, and then move on from there. So that was my thought process with the EASA. Nice. Okay, okay. No, that, 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 that's lovely. Um, and how was the weather in, in, in Europe in terms of, did you mess up your flight training? No, nah, because I was in Spain. So it oh. was very sunny most of the time, like, I think maybe like if there was like maybe a few days where it was very rainy, we couldn't fly, but most of the time it was sunny and mm. it was really like good, enjoyable, you know. So I, no I, I, I always I always boss that we have the best uh, aviation training weather in South Africa. So, but I I, I see now Spain is high, is right behind me. <laughs> yeah, I mean because you know like it, it, it's a British school and they relocated to Spain actually because it used to be it used to be a school it was they were based in the UK and they moved to Spain uh, a few years after they opened. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's like the weather was one of the big decisions for that. Okay. You know, because in the UK, there's a lot of towns where like it's very rainy, the weather is not good, it's very covered, like overcast and all of that. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they needed a place where it was more proactive, I believe. Okay. Now, what, what did you say were the highlights of your training? Your, your whole journey? The highlights, uh, in what way? Like uh, the difficulties or like the, the things that I would never forget? In fact, both things that... Both? Yeah, things that were like barriers to your training and things that happened and you said, wow, this feels good. Okay, so let's start <laughs> with the good. Let's start with the good. Yeah? Okay. So first thing first, like when you get into flight school, like it depends on the flight school you're at, but me, the first flight school I was in, the, the flight school I was in, the first thing you do is EASA, so you're in the ground school. Mm -hmm. So you're just taking classes just like you would in a university or school or whatever. And it's literally just classes, classes, classes. You've never, you've never flown a plane yet. You had, haven't touched anything when it comes to like flying. You're literally just on the ground studying. And you have to pass the first eight AS subjects. So we take five months. We have a few different ground instructors and we're, we're like in classrooms every day. And then we go to do the official EASA exams. And, you know, having never flown a plane and it being your first challenge, like it's like the first barrier from you actually touching that plane so it's like man i need to pass these exams to get into that plane so when i passed these exams man it was just amazing like mm. i mean obviously i worked hard and everything but i'm just saying like the effects how i felt after passing it's like yeah. you just feel like a weight getting off of your chest like you just feel free you know and i remember mm. like i literally just sat down for like 30 minutes just looking at the sky i was like man i made it like now it's on to flying yeah and that was that was the first thing that, that i will never forget from flight school so that was the first step the second step was obviously the first time i flew mm -hmm. the first flight i did with an instructor that was just amazing because i was like actually like i was grabbing the yoke i was doing my thing i had flown before i had flown gliders before if you see my channel you oh, know that yeah, but yeah, it's still yeah. different mm, yeah. i saw you in a glider i was like yo this guy has thrown almost everything yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, um, it, but it's different. Like, now you have a propeller, you have, like, this this engine, you know? So it's, like, it's, yeah. it's a different sensation. Like, man, I can go up, I can, you know, I can do my thing. Mm -hmm. so, so that was an amazing sensation. The second, the third one would be the first solo. First solo experience is amazing, unforgettable. I will never forget that day in my life. It's just you're alone, yep. you take off, you do the whole thing, you come back, you land by yourself. Mm -hmm. It's a mm -hmm. little bit, uh, I mean, it's overwhelming the first time you do it, but it always is. But that was just an amazing experience. Like, uh, we'll never forget that. I will never forget that. I would say after that uh, would be the last flight I ever did. Because basically how it works is for flights, like you do the PPL, the private pilot's license. You do the CPL exam in flights, the instrument rating exam. The instrument rating is exam, the way it's set up in the school that I went to, is, uh, is the last flight you actually do. Okay. So when you pass your, your instrument rating exam, it's over. You don't fly anymore in that school. Mm -hmm. You move on to the MCC, which mm -hmm. stands for um, multi-crew cooperation. Mm -hmm. And it's basically a certificate to say that, oh, this guy is good enough to, to work in a team, to be working for an airline. So you do that in a simulator. And uh, it's like a, we did it on the 737 simulator. And that was, mm -hmm. yeah. So that, that last flight was definitely something that marks me. 
And the last thing I would say that marked me in a positive way was flying the Boeing 737 because I was like, yeah, this is the last plane. Like right now, I mean, I know it's not a real plane, but I'm sitting inside of an airliner right now. And yeah. I know that I could take off and land with this, you know? So that was it. And obviously the, the last thing is when I finished, when I've just finished. Mm. And I'm going to tell you something about that moment. Actually, that, that's something I, I didn't tell a lot of people, but when I finished flight school, mm -hmm. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but it didn't. I, I didn't feel like I thought I would feel. Because when oh. I was when I got into flight school, I was like, man, when I was finished, like I would just be like jumping everywhere, like happy as hell. I wasn't actually. I was just like I was literally just. I was literally. I just felt good but calm. It was a sensation of like, you know, when you work very hard for something, mm -hmm. and you know you've earned that thing. You don't feel like over like you don't feel like overly happy you just feel like okay i've earned this i know the feeling yeah i know the feeling. yeah i was just like i I, I, just, I was just like okay i've earned this like i'm done now like mm. it's time to move on like it's time to go do my next. thing now. yeah I'm very happy like and i'm not gonna lie like the next day i felt more happy than when it happened because when it happens you don't really like realize it but, but i was very like okay like okay i, I worked hard for this i got it now mm. nice okay. so your mind was still processing things All right. yeah exactly <laughs> So now the difficulties I would talk about. The difficulties now. Mm. Hmm. The main difficulties for me personally, that's not something everybody will have. Me, obviously, like I said, I'm African and I was in Canada for a long time. So I was always in America or in Africa. So moving to Europe was a big uh, part of it for me because I'm not from Europe. I've never lived in Europe a day in my life. I mm. don't know that many people in Europe. So I was very far away from the people that I know from my family. And mm. that always affects them. Like, I mean, obviously, like, I can do my thing. I can take care of myself. It's no problem like that. But mentally, it's always like a challenge knowing that you're going to be away from people doing something challenging for a long amount of time. Because uh, a lot of people in that school, like, I mean, there, a lot of them were Russian, some were Spanish, some were Italian, some were British. Like, mm -hmm. it's literally like a matter of paying 200 euros and you're back home in like an hour. You know? oh, for okay. me, it's not the same thing. Because if I want to go back home, it's like either I go to Africa is going to be like at least like a six hour flight or I go back to Canada, it's going to be like a six, seven hour flight. So it's a bit different in that sense. So there was mm -hmm. that. Uh, secondly, um, it takes a lot and a lot of discipline. And you're in that small room. A lot of times it gets like, uh, it, you just get tired, man. And you just got to keep pushing through. And I'm a very disciplined person, but that awoke in me like a discipline that I didn't know I had, which mm -hmm. was, I think, necessary for me to grow up as well. Because mm -hmm. you never realize uh, your capabilities before you've actually, you're actually faced with it sometimes. And man, like it just awoke a certain discipline in me. So yeah, a lot of hard work, definitely. Um, it takes a lot of organization. Uh, I'm, I'm somebody who works a lot, but sometimes I don't have that much. Like I'm not that organized sometimes. And that definitely forced me to make a to-do list, organize mm -hmm. myself and have days where I know, okay, today I'm doing this. Today I'm resting. Today I'm doing this, you know, so. Definitely that. And uh, what else? Uh, what else? What else would I say is another difficulty? Sometimes the instructors, you know, sometimes you don't um, like personality conflicts. Like everybody has their personality. Mm -hmm. It forces you to be a little bit more open uh, because obviously you come in, you have your personality, you're used to dealing with certain types of people from wherever you come from. Mm -hmm. And uh, there, like, it's a different culture. Like, you're with Europeans and I mean, you fly with certain certain flight instructors, you love them, certain flight instructors, you love them a little bit less. Mm. But you've got to just, like, learn to communicate with them effectively and do your job in a professional way so that it works for him and it works for you, you know? So mm. that was another difficulty that I had to face. But, yeah, that, I think that was pretty much it. When it comes to exams and stuff, I didn't really fail anything. So, mm. I mean, that doesn't mean it wasn't hard. It was still difficult, but I didn't feel anything. <laughs> so, I'm, so I'm, I'm blessed. I'm blessed enough to have passed everything first time. So, nice. Yeah. What would you say is the best approach for, for, for those exams? Because I looked at the ESI exams, all 14 of them, and I thought, yeah, that's a loaded you know, project. Um, what, what's the best way to approach uh, that? To uh, like, what do you mean to prepare for it? Yes, yeah. Okay, so for me, the way I did it is this. During the week, I'm in grind mode. That's all I say. During the week, I'm in grind mode. Mm. Friday, I don't do anything except relax. Because okay. I, 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 I said to myself, I need a day where I can just like, if I feel sleep, I can just sleep, recover, 
I need a day where if I want to go out with my friends, I can just go out with my friend. We can go to the beach, do whatever. Friday was that day for me. Why Friday? Because on Friday, we go to class and we finish at like, uh, we finish at seven, at 5, 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. And we have the rest of the day. So it's not a full day of just not doing anything. It's mm -hmm. like half a day where I can do, if I need to go sleep, I can go sleep. If I want to go out, I can go out. Saturday and Sunday, Saturday, all day usually I will be working. I'll be working to catch up on the things that I haven't got during the week. So if there's something I haven't got, I will spend time studying it so I can make sure like, okay, now I get it. So for next week, I'm ready. And mm -hmm. Sunday, I will just be complimenting from that Saturday. And if I need to review anything new, I would do that. During the week, it's literally, I go to class. I finish that class. I, I get back to my room. It's like, okay, what classes were the most difficult today? And what is the most important thing that we learned today? I take that subject. I study it. I take a second subject that I know that is important. Like the way I would, I would set it up is like this. After I'm done studying for that thing that we did today, mm -hmm. the second thing I will prioritize is, okay, do we have an exam coming up? If we have an exam coming up, I'm going to study this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to study that, uh, that subject now. And if I have enough time now for the rest of the day, I will study a third subject that I'm, I just want to read or something just to mm -hmm. just like make sure like, I have that in mind. You know? The only exception is if I have an exam, like, in the next or in the next day or in the next two days, I will do nothing but that uh, that, that subject. Exam. That's okay. the exception. But mm. on other days, it will be two or three subjects. And Friday, every time Friday rests every time. Okay. So no, I think that that's valuable uh, insight yeah. for you know for for, for pilots who are still training um, yeah, yeah. on how to approach their exams. That could take you know a point or two from what you've just said now. Um, exactly. Yeah, your your journey to the to the airlines. I know um, as a, as a as a training pilot, you've always wanted to be part of a crew, and now you know the process started, and you saw this goal coming and happening in real life. Take us through that yeah. journey. Yeah. yeah. So basically, I finished flight school, went back to Canada, and it was just like, yeah. So now I'm done. It's time to like look for a job and stuff like that. I knew the thing is lucky for me. Like I said, I knew already where I kind of wanted to start. I wanted to start in Africa. That's what I knew I wanted to do. Because mm -hmm. I was like, I want to like, my first experience, first of all, I want to be kind of close to my family as well. But also I want to know that I've landed on my home field. I'm, like I said, I'm from Burkina Faso. I mm -hmm. want to do flights where I land there at least once in my career so I can say that's done. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. So I went back to Canada. There was like two or three airlines that were like, attracting me in west africa and so i applied i applied for two of them mm -hmm. and so i applied for two of them and uh, the first like my first choice basically contacted me almost right away like maybe like two three weeks after mm -hmm. they emailed me back basically after i did my uh, i sent my my folders and everything so i was like oh okay well that's that's nice so mm -hmm. i literally just like i was in canada just waiting for them to tell me what to do and so they told me oh when we have the next recruitment Basically, you have to come to Paris and do the recruitment there and stuff. So, yeah, okay. So, I just lived my life for like a few weeks. And then mm -hmm. I got a call telling me, oh, can you be in Paris on this date? I was like, yeah, sure. Went to Paris. Um, and basically what happens is they put me to an exam, a written exam first, mm -hmm. which was about the aircraft itself. Because mm -hmm. like A320, the aircraft. So, I, I did my A320 type rating after flight school. Okay. And so basically, uh, it's like a knowledge type thing. So mm. I had to go through that exam, pass that. Then I went to an ATPL exam, which is like a review of what you've learned from flight school. What do you know? You know? Mm -hmm. So I mm -hmm. did that exam as well. When that was done, I had to do a simulator session in the A320. So I had to fly with somebody and like, they would see, like, oh, does he know like his emergency procedures? Does he know how it works? Mm. Did that, went well. And then I had an interview with two uh, captains from the airline and it's like they test your psychology, the way you think, do you hold grudges? Like what kind of person? Not really like mm -hmm. they, they ask mm -hmm. specific questions. I'm not going to go into too much depth. Yeah, yeah, but they ask yeah. like specific questions and like, you're like, damn, like, okay, that's crazy. Like they really want to see what kind of person you are mentally. Like uh, are you mentally tough? Are you the kind of person who like vindictive? Like you like to get revenge or you the type of mm -hmm. person who is like that doesn't follow through on his promises or you the type of person you're not like, um, reliable you know they, they mm. test these things to see what you what you like how you think and so i did that and uh yeah apparently i got the job i was like, yes yeah, super happy went back to canada again and after that they called me to start for the airline and uh yeah i was just happy i came back i came here uh back in west africa and 
I started off with a few observation flights because you need to observe mm -hmm. before you start flying. You need, like be in the back seat and like see the way they work mm -hmm. and things like that. And uh, you go through line training, so you do a few flights, but there's always somebody behind you checking uh, mm -hmm. for your progress and make it's like a safety pilot. Like okay, uh, yeah. during line training, basically you're not a full fledged part of the airline. Yeah, you're not really a you're not a first officer. You're you're like you're like an intern basically, mm -hmm. and you have somebody who's uh, watching you from behind until a certain flight where you prove that if your captain was to basically like uh, go into a coma or like get incapacitated, you could land by yourself. So they do a simulation of that, and when you prove that you can talk to the radio, you can land, you can do everything by yourself, the guy behind you will now be deleted completely. He's going to be out of the picture. Okay. And you oh. do a few more flights. You're examined on a, a, a flight that's called the line, basically the line skill test. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you pass that flight, you're now a full-fledged member. And I did that, and now I'm a full-fledged member. <laughs> on the A320. Uh, so yes. Hey, goodness. On the A320. <laughs> yeah, so well, that's that lovely, man. That's lovely. I mean, I, I, I was checking your videos before coming on, 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 on to this interview, and it's a lovely machine, I must yeah. say. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. It's just amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, Jason, I'm going to wrap it up now with a question on, do you have any advice for aspiring aviators, young people who want to come in, or not necessarily the young people, some people convert from their careers, perhaps at the age of 30, someone says, I'm done with being a teacher. I want to pursue my goal of aviation. What advice do you have? Okay. So, what I can say is this now. No matter what decision you make, you need to make sure of one thing. You need to make sure that you're doing it because out of a place of passion and out of a place of real interest. Not out of a place of, I want to make money or not out of a place of, I want to show up that I'm a pilot now. And everybody's gonna respect because believe it or not, some people do that. Mm. Okay. Being a pilot is a difficult job. A lot of people, and this is something that is very true for people outside of the aviation industry. A lot of people think pilots is literally just get into the cockpit, take off, you press autopilot, you drink coffee, you land, and that's it. It's mm. not that. It takes a lot of work. I went to flight school with a few people who were like 34, 37. In, her, in, the, in their 30s, completely changing their careers around. Not all of them made it. A lot of them like either failed or a lot of them even like left in the middle because they were like, no, nah, this is not for me. And you need to make sure before you make that decision that that's not gonna happen to you. You need to make sure when you go there that it's not gonna be, oh, this is not for me and you've wasted money, you know? So the best advice I can give you is this. Make sure, I'm gonna, I'm gonna repeat myself, make sure that you have thought of everything. Who are you leaving behind? Do you have a whole family that you're leaving behind? Are you ready to go a year and a half at least without them and like being on your own and studying? Are you willing to like, maybe like come back maybe two or three times in the year just to see them, but come, but come back as, as soon as possible to finish your studies? Are you ready to leave your career completely to go pursue this? Are you like, are you like you need to basically make sure mentally that you're prepared for it? Because a lot of people they're not prepared mentally; they, they do it on impulse. Mm -hmm. I promise you, if all of the answers to what I just said is yes, you will make it happen. Mm -hmm. As long as you're willing to put in the work and that you have the mental toughness to be away from the people that you love and be away from your career that you've dedicated yourself in the past few years, if you're willing to temporarily set aside that time and that focus for the future, you will make it happen. I can tell you, I have a friend, I'm not gonna say his name, but like I said, he was in my class and it was the same thing. He literally left his career behind. It is possible, he left his career behind, his family behind. Like, everything that he had to come to this flight school and pursue it, it was not easy. And he was asking for help because he knew what he wanted. He was asking for help like from people like me and like other people that he trusted, sometimes when he had difficulties. And we all do that, I mean, we, we need to help each other, you know? Mm. And he made it, now he's flying in Europe, he's happy, he's, he's enjoying life, he's going to restaurants, flying, you know, and it's, he's just enjoying life. And like, what was behind is in the past now, and he's mm -hmm. focusing on what he has now. But you have to make sure that everything that you have, right, because people fall into this pattern of com like the, the comfort, the comfort zone, man. You need to make sure that you're ready to leave that comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And you need to make your research to make sure that you're making that decision out of, information and out of real passion 
that's the best advice I can give. Hmm. My brother, thank you very much for for, for joining us. Uh, I'm motivated right, my myself place, just listening to you now, and I'm sure whoever's going to listen to this will feel the same the same way as well. It's, um, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you. It was a it was a very fun experience, and it's just yeah. I I hope I didn't like have too many big words for things. I, I hope I didn't talk too much, but <laughs> I hope it helps. No, because I have a tendency sometimes to like go on tangents, you know, because I, I have a lot on my mind. But uh, so yeah, trust me, everything you say today, somebody out there yeah. has to hear it. You know, because exactly. in aviation we cannot sugarcoat things. You know, like That's you say, people think being a pilot is sexy. You press a button, drink coffee, the thing lands itself. It's not so yeah. like before, during, and after. You know, and That's whatever you say today was no, on point. Exactly. Hmm. Exactly. Yeah. It's like the, the good sides are very good, but the bad sides, the bad sides are bad as well. Like mm -hmm. you need to earn that position. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I really appreciate my brother. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Angelo. Thank All you right. very much. Cheers, cheers. I really hope you have been inspired by that talk with uh, Jason Baudry, our pilot who flies the Airbus A320. There's a lot that he said that, uh, that, that that should resonate with potential aviators or future aviators. There's a lot that he touched on in terms of inspirational talk, in terms of things to watch out for and things to do and things not to do. All in all, I, I hope that his journey was an inspiration to those of you who are still aspiring to enter the cockpit. Angelo Duba here urging you to continue to support the channel by liking the videos, by, by subscribing, by urging your fellow potential aviators to subscribe so they can um, stay tuned and get uh, notified and, uh, and, and, and get, get good content coming their way. Please do click like on the button below and uh, do hit the subscribe button and remember to keep pushing, keep working hard you know, because with every hour the cockpit beckons, it doesn't matter which hour it is. It could be an hour of searching for more information. It could be an hour of watching this, this, this channel. It could be an hour of writing your exams or studying towards your exams. It could be an hour of you spent doing your exercises in the GF or in a cross country or just doing our building. With every hour the cockpit beckons, keep doing that. You will one day eventually enter the cockpit. Angelo Jube here signing out and saying until next time, stay safe. Okay.